everyone, I'm back with another update. And for this one, I had to rip apart some very core scripts and structure of the app. And at some point, I was afraid I wasn't able to put it back together. But no, I made it. And now it's out and it's huge. That's what she said. But before we start, if you are a new user and want to learn how to use Posit, please watch the video link in the corner or in the description. This one instead is going to be all about the new goodies for this new update. Okay, let's start with the elephant in the room. You have seen the intro, guys. We have new mannequins. Let's have a look. Let me start with the mannequin button, actually. This shows different options according to your current selection. Let's say you have no mannequin selected. This plus icon lets us add a new mannequin into the scene. But wait, check this. Yes, you can finally have multiple mannequins until your device melts. Now, on my Pixel 3 XL, I didn't notice any interactions slow down with even a dozen of them. Only the undo and redo suffers, so yeah, don't go too crazy. By the way, did you see the outline on the selected body part? Helps a lot to understand better which part you are posing, especially when you have overlapping parts or props, and the outline also temporarily disappears when you start posing the part. This makes uh, intersection with other objects more clear. See how easier it is to understand how deep the hand is intersecting with the hip. Also remember, when you see this gizmo, you can move the part with the two finger drags or with the pinch gesture to move them further away or closer to you. If you have a mannequin part selected, the button will show other mannequin related options like customize your mannequin, delete the mannequin, open the predefined pose gallery yes now you open it from here or swap it with another one let's take a look for instance at the werewolf now all the mannequins share the same skeletal structure and the werewolf was my extreme case to see if my automatic rigging system would work on a mannequin with such a unique proportions and with a leg that is pretty different from a human one well, in the end, it is not so different if you realize that this part is basically a human foot, or at least this, this is how I treat it. So moving it close to the ground makes it align the tip to, to the ground itself. And by rotating it and translating it, you can basically do all the poses that you need with this leg. Of course, when you make him take the same pose of a more traditional humanoid, well, you might need to adjust it a little bit. Nevertheless, you now have a very cool new mannequin to reference for your drawings. You know what? Adam doesn't seem particularly impressed by our wolfie. Let's see if this is still the case when we access the customization panel and change the scale of it. Yes, you can finally change the scale as well. And from the customization panel, you can not only change the overall size, but also the material, the color. And you can now even a new feature, mirror the current pose. The mirror plane is determined by the direction the hip is facing. You know what else I tried with this mannequin? To incorporate in some parts blend shapes, also known as shape keys, also known as morph targets. Wouldn't it be great if the 3D world agreed more on a general naming convention like end world axis? Anyway, what I tried is this. As usual, at the beginning, I try to implement something and test it on one or two examples. So for now, the only parts with blend shapes are this one and another mannequin part that I will show you later. Okay, let's check the other mannequins. We have Bobby. This is a scan of a traditional mannequin that I found and I scanned with a, with a 3D scanner. And it has that retro style that, I don't know, it's very satisfying to play with. Next, we have a great anatomical reference, the male eco shame. Of course, it is still a mannequin, so it's not going to be 100% correct, especially around the joints, or it's not going to replace photo references, but still very good for superhero you know, kind of drawings or drawings where you need to reference a bit more carefully the muscle anatomy. Moving on, we have Eve, which is free and unlocked by default now. Then there is Moku, yes, here Tekken meets modern day James mannequin style. Very good if you want to have just a very simple cylindrical representation of your character, especially if you change the material to this clay one and adjust a little bit the color. Yeah. Moving on, we have the skeleton. 
another great anatomical reference. And in this one, I tried another kind of body part special behavior, the skull. In this case, the head of this mannequin has an extra part that is usually not contained in other mannequins' heads. When you tap it, you have this new icon that appears. Tapping that allows you to start rotating the jaw. I also love the way the shoulder blade moves when you translate the upper arm. I like it a lot. Then we have, we have the first stylized mannequin, Sunny. Sunny is the mannequin that has the other blend shape part. Can you guess which one is it? Hey, the breasts are more often than not a fundamental trait of many characters, so it's needed. And then we have, yeah, and then we have the werewolf. Okay, quick mention of the safe scene gallery. Too many people struggle to find it, so I moved it here. Also, uh, now you can name your scene. Other little requests that I think makes a lot of sense. Now, if we check the options, first and foremost, I think I finally fixed a problem that some phones had where the sensitivity was way too high. I think now it should behave more consistently. Please, if you had this issue, let me know if it now works better. Also, there are a couple of new checkboxes. We have autosave, new feature. It works in this way. It saves the scene you're currently working on on a single dedicated file and keeps overwriting every minute. I tried to multi-thread it, but maybe I missed something. It still takes a split second, at least on my phone, not so much on the, on the iPad. But yeah, if you are annoyed by this micro lag every minute, you can disable it. But it does come in handy when sometimes you change focus and your phone shuts down and pause it. If that happens, no problem. You just lost maximum one minute of your work. And then when you open pause it again, the app will ask you if you want to uh, load the autosave file. There is another new checkbox here called Joint Twist. This refers to the behavior of some body parts that propagate their twists along their length to be a bit more realistic. You have it on the upper arms and upper legs, but the most notable parts are the forearms. There is a catch though. The joint-based deformation algorithm used by, I guess, all real-time engines is something called linear blend skinning. The good thing is that it's very fast, but if you twist too much, you have the so-called candy wrap effect. In general, it works mostly okay, and if you start seeing it, chances are that you are trying to twist the, the wrist a bit too much, or maybe you can try to adjust a bit the elbow position, like this. I don't know, I find it cool in general, especially with the skeleton. Uh, check this. You have this quite realistic crossing of the radio and you. In any case, if you don't like it or it starts introducing that kind of artifact, you can disable this feature altogether from here. So, what do you think? Does this deserve a 2.0? No? no? Well, prepare, because the best has yet to come. Behold! We are now in a new scene. In this scene, pose it becomes something else. It becomes com pose it. All the mannequins I've shown you so far are called archetypes. When you select an archetype from this gallery, its preview appears on the wall back there, and this will happen if you tap on your mannequin. You basically start sampling the body part of the archetype and switching it with your mannequin's one. Let's make a new one. To exit this mode, tap on an empty space. This already gives you a huge number of combinations, but as you probably noticed already, some parts might be quite different in size from other ones. And But this is not a problem, because you can also change the scale of each single part, either proportionally from this slider here, or on a single axis by aligning your pin gesture to one of these axes. And as usual, this works on any part of the screen, no need to touch exactly the, the axis. You can also do this on both sides or disabling this toggle here, you can do it only on one side. If you mess up too much with the proportions, you can reset the default size from this button here. 
So even without all the mannequin parts switching, already only playing with the scale, you can get new mannequins that look like more cartoonish, teenagers, super deformed. There are so many possibilities. Then when you're happy, you can save your custom mannequin from this gallery here, you can name it too. And you can open it in the posing scene. Now, because the mannequins might be quite different from each other, some parts fit better than others together. And of course, the freak show is just around the corner. But you can also make some, some great looking new ones. Also note that in this room, the posing capabilities are limited. That's because you might be constantly editing the general structure of the mannequin, so I cannot apply my rigging system at every frame. You can rotate body parts, but it's more to check and compare proportions. Also, the camera is fixed to kind of make you develop your mannequin more or less in this space. And so you have, you know, all your mannequins more or less consistent in size. And we can always change the overall size in the posing scene, as we have seen already. Let's go back to that actually from this button here. And let me show you the cherry on the cake. You not only have this power to create your own custom mannequins, post them as you want, use the props and reference them for your drawings. Now you can also export the scene as OBJ, meaning you can export the actual geometry and use it as a base mesh to sculpt in other softwares like Nomad Sculpt, ZBrush, Blender and so on. I, for instance, created my personal Posit Adam Digital Pen Holder. Cool, huh? You actually need to do something in Blender to make it printable, but maybe I will make a separate video to show you how to prepare the mesh for that. I want to say thanks to Yasir Kula, not only for making the free plugin I use to easily write the files on your mobile device public folder structure, but also for supporting me on his Discord and via email to make it work in Posit. If you are a Unity developer, check his Git repository. The link is in the description. He wrote a lot of super useful plugin. Thanks a lot, yes, it would. There are also a couple of new props, but they were not my main focus for this update. So there are glasses. And the head of the next mannequin that I will hopefully finish at some point. But in the meanwhile, I just put a hat here in case you want like a realistic hat to reference for your drawings or to use for your base mesh. Another thing you can do with props that was requested is to duplicate the prop. All right, I think feature-wise, this was it. I truly believe that with this update, you know, with the possibility to compose your mannequin, export it, etc., pose it became really something else. It is so much more than what I originally envisioned. But unfortunately, with great powers come great problems. As I said at the beginning, to make all these new features, I had to turn Posit inside out and upside down, which in short means that your previous files won't work in this new version, sorry about that. I also had to redo all the body poses and hand poses for the same reason, which by the way are many more now, so check them out too. Another thing that changed is the add system. Now some items are free by default, some items are locked, but can be unlocked by watching an ad. And by doing that, you have access to all the ads lock items for a short time. Then they will all lock again. This gives you a good time window to explore the pose you need or the prop that you're looking for without the need to watch too many ads. But for the most advanced items and features, you need to get Pusit Pro. It is basically a one-time purchase of five francs, which is supposed to be around $5. And Posit Pro removes all the limitations and ads forever. To the users that already donated something in the past to remove the ads, guys, thank you so much. You are supposed to have Posit Pro already unlocked. If that is not the case, try deleting your local data from here. The app will shut down and at that point, uninstall and reinstall the app. If you don't have Posit Pro ready, before you buy, I want to be clear. In case you don't know, Posit is my pet project. I originally made it for my personal use, then I thought to share it, and now, thanks also to our chats and comments, it has become what I think is a very cool piece of art. But the amount of time I can dedicate to it might change a lot, and I can't guarantee always a consistent and reliable support, updates, or retro compatibility like in this case. But obviously, if you like these new features and want to support my efforts unlocking Pussy Pro, thank you so much, that means a lot for me. 
Okay, I believe that's it. What do you think? Does this deserve now a 2.0? In any case, I'm very happy with what I managed to put together and to know that so many artists are using an app that I made makes me incredibly proud. Especially when I see your drawings or your posted scenes, sometimes they really make my day. As usual, if you have suggestions or ideas, feel free to write me wherever you want. That's it, guys. Take care and thank you for keeping Posit alive and kicking like I never would have thought. Ciao, Ben.